this episode of Life Below Zero. It's a whole different ball game in the summertime. Unpredictable weather is shaking up life in Alaska. Time to make these things is right now. A lesson in survival cuts deep. Ow. Let's go! Andy and Kate put their youngest dogs to the test. Nope. Hey, look. Glenn encounters unexpected visitors. Oh, oh my God. And Sue's quest to find food brings her to unfamiliar waters. Summer is the time to gather food to survive the winter months. But the absence of caribou and kabak has forced her to seek out other options. Fishing trip is looking uh, more like a hunting trip right now. I don't know, I've seen maybe 10 caribou. You got a little mom and baby sleeping right underneath the ball that I'm gonna sleep in. There are rules that govern flying and hunting on the same day as a no-no, that's unfair advantage. So I have to wait until the, you know, tomorrow morning in the wee hours before I can actually pull the trigger. I've heard about this fishing hole for a long time. I want to try it out. And just worked out there's some caribou here, too. My little cubby for the next couple days. The dew line days, the early warning detection system during the Cold War. Big radar golf balls. The last of the remaining sites on the north shore of Alaska are disappearing. They've all been uh, decommissioned. No longer military property. They're tearing everything out and getting rid of it. Oh, this is pretty cool. There is supposedly, like, the North Slope's coolest Arctic char fishing hole. And, I want you know, I keep hearing everybody talk about it over the years, but I haven't been able to get here. Well, now I did. So that's the main focus, but coming in, the caribou are just kind of running around. You know, I have to wait until 3 a.m. to pull the trigger. So as far as I'm concerned, it gives me a little bit of time. I can make my little cubby nice. I can get a little cup of tea or something going. I'll go ahead and uh, work on my fishing while I'm waiting on my hunting. Working on my hunting while I'm waiting on my fishing. Kind of spoiled for choice right now. If you want something, especially up here, either make it yourself or you just do without. Summer delicacy, seagull eggs. too it's really easy when you have a system of two people trying to get eggs my younger kids haven't done this very much my older kids know this place very well oh look nope that's not a nest these are tidal flats and after the flood has passed as you can see from this mud the water's been over top of it then they come and lay their eggs as soon as the flood goes down the flood's gone down hopefully the smelts are coming in because they gorge themselves on these small fish and right after that They'll go and they'll nest. Keep munching down and making eggs. It's like a little maze. You have to go and search um, for little islands and stuff. It's always fun for the kids. It's like Easter. Oh, nothing! Nothing! 
See how they, they carve this out? They got rid of the debris. As soon as they're ready to lay eggs, we'll start to see feathers. A few feathers smashed in there, and then they'll lay the eggs. So, so from indications is that they're getting ready, but they're not here yet. They're getting ready to lay. Could be tomorrow. Only fresh nests. I see they're working on their nests. Yeah, we've seen a few nests. There's, there's quite a few nests that aren't worked on, and there's about maybe, I've seen five or six that were worked on. So, no feathers in them yet, though. No feathers in them, no. Nope. So I would say maybe a day. As long as we're here early, we're happy. When we get back down here, that'll be fresh. This will be awesome. Even the most confident person or knowledgeable person is going to get their butt kicked from time to time. But as long as it doesn't kill you, it's a good learning experience. I think I'm going to take some dogs out and run them. Get a few of these guys used to boats. Try and use my dogs all year long. They're not just sled dogs. They have to know how to get into boats. When they're in boats, they have to behave. Because uh, if they get 15 or 20 dogs in a boat and they're not behaving, it's pretty chaotic and uh, pretty dangerous for everybody. During the flood of 09, having all these little extra skills really made a big difference. They had to get tied into boats after they'd all been scared out of their wits floating around in water. Getting into boats, getting into canoes, getting into a helicopter, driving an eagle, having a stranger take them in a truck. They handled it beautifully. And that is good training. You're gonna dump me. Oh, man, you're strong. Oh, crap. Our summers are four months long. Four months to do all the work we need to do. Before you know it, winter's here. Everybody in the boat. In the boat. Good boy. These dogs were rescued from our property in 2009 by canoe. So that really brought home to me the importance of not only teaching a dog to be a sled dog, but to be a really well-rounded dog, to be exposed to a lot of different things and have a lot of different capabilities. It's my job in the summertime now to get out there, expose the dog to what I expect him to do, give him that experience, give him that confidence so that when I decide to go out and do something, it goes like clockwork. Let's go for a run. Let's go for a run. You guys ready to go? This will be a test. It's very exciting living out here. I mean, it's it's so much more complex and more intellectually challenging and physically challenging than if I were just to go buy my food. stoke the fire i like to just stand by the stove and just enjoy the warmth i would like to take a sauna that would feel great when it's cold at the end of the day your muscles are sore just to get in there maybe i could build a little sweat lodge maybe i could make something like the shape of a teepee or maybe a little dome just cover it with a tarp put a wood stove in it but i've never built a dome before i'm not sure how that would work out it'd be an experiment i'd have to try the goal is to contain the heat. If I make it small enough and it's tightly enough built that it'll get it really hot in there. So I work up a good sweat. This looks like a pretty good spot. It's level. It's pretty close to the lake. I just have to be able to sit in it and have a wood stove in there with me. If I was sitting right here and I had a stove here, a little place like this, that'd be nice. I'm gonna go look for some poles to start building it right here. Living hundreds of miles away from the nearest hardware store, 
Glenn must build everything by hand. See, a tree about this big around, I can bend it. And then if I bent another one down and tied them together, I'd have an arch. That might work. This is the thing about a sweat lodge. It's more than just physical. It's going to be good for the consciousness, too. It's a whole different atmosphere in there. I am going to have to clean these up really well because any little thing like this, that's going to stick right through my tarp. I got to take off all the little sharp nubs. All these jobs, they're real enjoyable. It's just such a beautiful atmosphere to work in here. It's just gorgeous. caribou right there. It looks like a cow and a calf. I haven't seen any caribou in about 10 days. It's nature. It's alive out here. There's a lot going on. There's a wolf right now walking along the edge of the shore right behind the caribou. Now he's considering his options. There's a wolf right now walking along the edge of the shore, right behind the caribou. Like, and now he's considering his options. separated. Is the other caribou still in the woods? We don't usually see caribou down here this late in the spring. I don't need caribou now, but it's pretty interesting to see him. If that calf made it, it's going to go back to its mother eventually. Caribou can generally outrun a wolf as long as they get a little head start. I can't imagine anything more interesting to do than watch life like this taking place. You never know what's going to happen. That's what's so exciting about living this way is that I'll be doing one thing like building a little sweat lodge and the next thing you know there's caribou getting chased by wolves right here in my front yard. It's constant planning here and it's not for next week, it's for next year. That's really important when you live this way. Come, come. 
Everybody come. Two reasons why I'm doing this. One is just to get the dogs out, muscle them up a little bit. But probably more importantly, it's being confident. And whenever I tell them to do something, they do it. Let's go home. Atta boy, good boy, Jack. Good man. Come on, Coop. Jack, you did a good job. You're a boat dog now, Jack. Just because I haven't done it doesn't mean squat. It's it's something I'm going to do. It's not things I haven't done, it's things I haven't done yet. An unseasonably late caribou migration in Kavik has forced Sioux 34 miles to the coast in search of food. Yesterday, Jake brought me in. There were a few caribou running around, but I uh, can't pull the trigger. You can't fly and hunt on the same day. And I'm just getting ready. I'm making some coffee, and I'm going to go out and see if I can spook one of them up. I mean, I've never had a year where I only see 6 to 12 caribou from May until now. I mean, we're right before the migration. The worry is still there that if they don't migrate through my area within 5, 10 miles of my area, that, that's a kind of a game changer for me for the winter. Time to go and see who's out there. So I brought my stick, the gun, got my net, and uh, I'm just going to kind of go prepared for anything that might happen. I need to get something so I survive the winter. Try to put the sneak on these up here. I'm gonna leave my pack and my bowl here. There is one. There's two. Where's the baby? I have to verify that there's no cats. It's an opportunity, but you don't shoot moms and babies. You know, there's definitely three cows, one's fairly juvenile without calves two cows with calves but they're now they're all together that leaves me one cow that i gotta try and pick out of all of them the amount of effort it's going to take to try and maybe pick out that one cow is not worth it i i do not will not shoot a cow with a calf and it's just too difficult for me to separate them out so on to the next thing is the pond everybody yay screams about i haven't had the opportunity to add much fish to my diet but i want to so this is a good learning experience take that i mean it take it opportunity to add much fish to my diet but i want to so this is a good learning experience take that i mean it take it wasn't just a couple of feet from being dinner when the line broke. I have undersized equipment and a formidable foe. I do need to work the bank as little bit of it as I got. I gotta kind of try and wear them out. There he is. Oh, it's a little bitty guy. But I got him. Oh, Don't let him go. The size I wanted, but he is a fishy. Yay, I got a fishy! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come to mama. Yeah! Now that's a freaking char, man. I think that you probably can count on two hands, maybe three. The amount of people that have been to this location to fish. Whoa, whoa! This is a bigger one. I had heard 
It was this good. I had hoped it was this good. So yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. Oh no! <laughs> almost, almost got away. Number 10. Final one for the day. You know, I had a pretty good day. Uh, eventful. Went, uh, saw some caribou, tried to get on them, got on them, got within shooting range. Turns out to be, uh, cows and calves, so can't get them. Found this one, bam, 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 bam. Got a little technique down to get them away from the current, lessening the, the power of the strike and the fight, and was able to get them up here, give them headaches, and, and get my limit. What a beautiful fish. Thank you, fishy. What was that? You're welcome. Okay. It's not just this place or this way of life. That's all interchangeable. It's what's in your head that matters. Consciousness, you know. To combat long days of physical work and bitter winter temperatures in the bush, Glenn Villeneuve is building a sweat lodge. I got the first two here, and I want to put two in the other direction. I'm just going to lean those together. You, you use natural materials out here. They don't grow straight. Trees aren't straight, so why try to make everything straight? You don't need it straight. I can picture sitting in here, getting a good sweat. If I wanted to, I could build a much more elaborate sauna, but this is kind of a nice way to do it. Just keep things simple. If I can spend one day building a sauna, why make it more complicated than that? I've got several steel barrels that I store things in just to protect my things from the bears and from the weather. This is an extra one. I'm going to make it into a wood stove. There. That's where the wood's going to go in. Smoke comes out here. Needs a place for air to go in on the bottom. This is a tarp I'm going to cover the sweat lodge with. Well, so far so good. Frame hasn't fallen down yet. Awesome. This looks great. This looks like it's going to work. It's just the right size. I, I'm real happy with the way the frame turned out. I just have to secure the canvas, cover the floor in spruce boughs, get the wood stove going in here. And I'm going to have a good sweat in here. Best thing about the sauna is the atmosphere. You could actually live in something like this. What it's about for me is it's just about meditative, calm, peaceful living. Awesome. I've got the stove in, got the spruce boughs down. Can't wait to try it out. Knowing the proper preparations makes for a smart person. And uh, you live long, live good, and you uh, don't rely on anybody but yourself. This is a place where I do a lot of hunting in this area. The birds fly by, the caribou will come here to cross. This is like a natural trap. And one of the best things here is the fish that come through. Right now, I'm waiting to see if I can see the little smelts that are coming along. Smelts are fish, real small ones. They're thin. As they mate and they, they spawn upriver, they turn around and go back immediately after doing it, but they don't all do it at the same time. So they may come in here packed in a bunch, real easy to scoop out, but if we caught them coming down, we'd only be getting two or three at a time. So we really want to get them full of eggs as they're heading up. What I'm counting on today is for the seagulls to let me know where the smelts are, because as soon as the seagulls have fed themselves very well on smelts, they're going to head back, and they're going to go nest up, and they're going to go lay eggs. So we want the smelts, too, and then we'll go get eggs from the seagulls. So in a round-robin way, I'm kind of trying to predict when the seagulls are going to lay their eggs, and at the same time, I don't want to miss the smelts. I'm going to go to these alders. I'm going to find a couple that have some really nice forks in them, and I'm going to make two dippers. I'm going to show the kids how to make those, and they can learn to dip netting. you need to do is you need 
need to bend them like this so that you know that they're flexible. It doesn't even have to be a hoop. It can be like a more of a square. It can even be like a shovel shaped. It doesn't matter. We still want to be able to make something that we can dip down and pick up the, the fish with. When you get a lot of fish in there, it weighs a lot. And you're going to need the strength of the, of the hoop to pull them up. It's looking good. And if you add one more, you can make a good hoop. We're using natural materials and we're using them basically in their natural form. It's using the stuff around you to accomplish comfortable living. There's really a lot of things you can do for yourself. I uh, passed the knife tip across my finger and I sliced it. It doesn't even hurt, the knife was so sharp. I had to double check to see if I was even cut. Just don't touch where the bandage goes on here. There you go. Just the, swiped it with the tip of my knife. Okay, we're good. Spending the summer on the Kowalik River, hundreds of miles from any medical services, the hailstones must rely only on themselves. Look at all those birds coming over that hillside. You girls want to go over to the river and go have a look and see if you see any little flashes going by or you see like look like raindrops hitting the water with no rain just get to a high bank don't go to the sandbar go to the high bank only indicator we really have right now are birds the seagulls will let us know they eat those fish and they gorge on them before they lay eggs what do you think and then it'll dip into the smells and pull them up and hopefully dump them back in the water or do it again. And when the smells have passed by, we'll zip up river with the boat and get ahead of them and do it again. Does that sound good to you? We're going down river here and we're gonna have a look and see if there's smelts coming up the river. They take quite a while, but what we really want to do at this evening time is make sure that we're not going to have the smelts pass us by in our sleep. We had a really late freeze up and we're having a really early breakup, so we've got like an extra month and a half of summer at it. Hopefully the fish have caught up. It's time for smelting. We just don't know where they are at the moment. I don't see any smelts. I think we're going to go back home because we're down here by the mouth. And the sun's gonna go down soon. It's better for them not to have shown up than to have missed them. It's the same old story. Experience is knowledge. Knowledge is confidence. Confidence is a job well done. summertime it's all about dogs and boats each dog has a talent so oftentimes some dogs have multiple talents but they all have a weakness somewhere and so it's my job as their owner to figure out what their weaknesses are and realizing that when i go to do a job i don't ask them to do something that they're not good for so what i plan on doing kate i want to take topaz and jack and cougar in we'll put topaz in lead and then Jack and Cougar are next to each other, and then we'll let them go. Just see, I have no idea. I'm hoping they don't run all the way back to the lake with us. I'm hoping they'll just go a little ways and stop, but I have no idea what they're going to do. It's really important to identify at a very young age dogs that have potential leadership quality. Topaz is, is probably going to be one of my better leaders in the future, so now I'm trying to expand that into summertime. The other dog that's showing a lot of potential is Jack. He's a big dog. Having a large lead dog that can break trail would be a real asset to me when I'm out trapping. Okay, tighten up. The trail that I'm using today is mainly a winter trail. In the winter time, the water freezes, smooths it out a little bit. We get snow blowing in there, drifts it in, and then I can put in a pretty nice trail. Uh, it's a whole different ball game in the summertime. It's full of ruts, pits. It's going to be interesting to see how they, they handle it. Right ahead. Uh -oh. That was 
was really good, you guys. Good dogs. First things first, the canoe goes in the water, Topaz gets in the boat, and we go out for a paddle and see how she does. Now you gotta learn how to do this. Come on. Good. Right there. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Good. Sit. Stay. Stay. That's what you want to do. Good girl. Looks like Topaz is doing really well. She's sitting there, just watching the paddle. I think she's been in a boat all her life. You're doing a good job, Topaz. Good girl. I'm pretty impressed. She was the one I was worried about the most. I thought she's so hyper. I thought for sure that dog was just gonna go. Uh-uh, not going. Gotta move around. Gotta jump. Uh-oh, we got a leak. We got a pretty good leak. Uh-oh, we got a leak. I got a geyser coming in. Why don't you look around those packs? I might have some duct tape or something, Kate. We're gonna have to tape it up. Kind of looks like it was a bear tooth or a bear claw hole. It was one I missed when I was patching it. Oh, no. I think you did good. Okay, out. Good girl. Good girl. This is what I call a Navy patch. One of the things you learn if you're a seaman in the Navy is how to fix a hole in the boat by driving wedges into it. That was kind of unexpected, but that's the way it is out here. You know, you just got to deal with things as they come and and figure out what you got to work with and make it work. All right, let's try Jacker. Hey, Jack, Jack. I think Jack's at a kind of a critical time in his development. He's going from puppyhood into adulthood, or at least becoming uh, an older teenager. We're going to make Jack graduate from high school and move on to college today. Yeah, boy, in, in, sit, sit. <laughs> no. Let's get him back in. You stand on the dock so he can't do that, okay? In the boat. Come on, boy. Yeah, that boy. Now I got you. Good boy. He looks so pathetic out there. He's just holding on to Andy for dear life. You sure make it hard to paddle, though, with you right in my face like this. Jack was pretty tentative getting in the canoe. Uh, he's still a young dog. He hasn't had a lot of experience. I don't expect him to do perfect on any of this stuff, you know. It's, it's all repetition with dogs. you got to do it over and over. This is the whole point of it, is to have them experience different situations. You know, they've got to learn that where they're put and they're told to sit and stay, that that's where they stay. Out, out. <laughs> all right, Jack, out, out. Good boy. Yeah. Mainly the, the experience was just to get the dog settled down in the canoe, get them used to riding in the canoe without jumping around. For me, Topaz is kind of the star of the day as far as performance goes. She did a great job leading, great job riding in the canoe. And be a lead dog. Actually, let's put Jack in front. See if he can go home. Oh. Jack? No, you're you're been demoted. Jack's gonna be lead dog. Yay, Jack the lead dog. It was a big surprise that Topaz was the easy one and Jack wasn't. Because we would we have would lost money if we had the other way. Let's go. Up, up. Woohoo! Let's go. What I'm trying to do is build confidence with Jack. And the only way I'm gonna build confidence is to give him a lot of experience. I think this was really good for me to have a chance during the summer months to, to put them to the test and to do some different things with them. Things that most people don't do with sled dogs. They really excel at what they're doing once they have confidence. And, and that's the key. You got to get the confidence or you don't get the performance. So I'm really excited. Every day out here is uncertain. And that makes it interesting. I never know what's going to happen. That's part of the reason I'm here. Ooh, that's hot. I got my sweat lodge built. It's a beautiful curved shape. I went with a dome. Never built the dome before. Turned out pretty good. Nice. It's as much a psychological benefit as physical for me. Just to sit here, it's just so calm. 
and it purifies and it puts your consciousness in a different place. It's just very relaxing. It's very meditative. Oh, it's hot. Oh. The contrast between the heat and the cold, it really is invigorating. It just gets the heart going, it gets the blood circulation. Keeps you feeling vital. That's what it's all about out here. Being alive. The Arctic is full of opportunists. Human beings as well as the animals. It's hard to eke a life out here. It challenges me. Last night and yesterday, it was a big day, a lot of hiking, and um, went after some caribou that I saw, and it turns out to be cows and calves. You know, the numbers say there's one lone cow, but I couldn't separate who was who, so I had to let them go. And I continued on to the fishing hole, caught the limit for the day, and but it took, you know, it was another six, eight miles hiking getting back here. So I've got my fishies here. I did not uh, finish cleaning them out yesterday. I just had to get warm. And as you can see, I'm sleeping on a metal floor. You know, I'm over 50, I'm overweight, I smoke cigarettes, hiking my brains out at 30 degrees. So I'm a little slow going this morning, but I want to get out there and get these guys taken care of. At these temperatures, they're perfectly fine to leave overnight, but I don't want to leave them any longer than that. My heart to yours, buddy. You'll be some tasty little meat. Keep me going this winter. Get this guy cut up. Get those fish cut up. Have some surf and turf for dinner. I mean, I thought I was tired before. Now I just made a lot more work for myself, but that's the, that's the work that keeps you alive in the winter. Couldn't ask for a more successful two-day venture, you know? Got my limit on fish. Got a little bit of meat for the freezy. It's a good trip. It's a time of harvesting. Get your, whatever you're gonna use to eat for the winter, better get it in. Any little bit I get done before the snow flies adds into being able to make it until the snow melts. That's the goal. I got to come out here and it's, great peace of mind for me to be able to just take a couple of days away from the hecticness and uh, relax out here but getting the fish finding the fishing hole getting a caribou it's productive it went from being just a couple of days and a nice thing a buddy did for me to putting meat in the freezer and uh, being able to sustain myself this week so it's uh, all around what a really great trip I can just go get it myself and make a living from the land around me. That's subsistence. That's real freedom.
This is uh, not too big of an island, but it's not too small. Try not to fall in the water. Most of the water isn't any deeper than the boots. Stay in pairs. If somebody gets stuck in mud, you help them out. You girls know to keep your eyes on these seagulls because they'll dive. You will know you're close to a nest when they are trying to hit you in the head. Go for the summer to get eggs and uh, save them up. We like to eat the fresh eggs. So even though there weren't any yesterday, today might be the day. And this is a real nice area. We call it the flats. We're able to see long distances and keep an eye on each other. So I'm always glad that you can see for like a mile away. We just got to these mud flats and my kids are all dispersing. We need to go out here and go eat hunting. I really hope I run into something good. trying to get a renewable resource and not impact the population. Any luck? Nope, I think we're too early. I don't think we're too early. I think we need to keep walking. I think we're still too So, Trey, you want to go? Go through here. Right in there. out here and they're scattered all over this island <laughs> hopefully the kiddos are doing good oh i could see eggs king six of them six eggs lucky thing to get a little scared this is kind of a crazy spring for us the breakup came probably three to four weeks early this year it makes it difficult when the weather patterns have changed so severely First time couldn't ever look for eggs, so um, this is kind of a fun time for her. Um, I'm glad she found a few. <laughs> How much did you get? I got a dozen. You got 13. This is a good first day, I'd say. Yeah. I wonder what the other kids have. How much did you get? We didn't count yet. Come on over and count. It's not really a competition, but it is really exciting when everybody gets together and we get to count everybody's eggs and see how much we come up with. Yeah, you can count the one that you should count eight. Yeah, I counted mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. How much do you guys get? Three, three Two dozen. We have um, 24 all total, and then you have you 17. 17? <laughs> what you guys got? <laughs> we got 17. We, we got I, had, I had 12, but one broke. We got 20! When we wake up in the morning, we'll be having some real good breakfast. Fresh eggs. Do you want it? Yeah! Do you want it? Yeah! 